Good morning. Welcome to uh, Easy Power Tuesday Refresher Series. My name is Jim Chastain. This is the second in a three-part series of installations dedicated to data collection. Last week we sp specifically detailed what data and which elements needed data collecting on. This week we're going to show how to build templates to uh, keep your uh, data collection process organized and uh, potentially even di divide up the task if you have multiple people working on the uh, solution. So welcome and um, first thing I want to start with is talking about the reference manuals that are available and uh, are free. This is the Practical Solutions Guide to Arc Flash Hazards. It's available on our website for download. It includes a complete chapter just on data collection, and it has built into it some templates itself for um, breaker data and, and the like. But I encourage anyone that's considering starting the process to review this information for more than just the data collection recommendations. So it's available on our website, easypower.com, ArcFlash, and uh, it's the references arc flash book and what you're going for is to download go to the download page it's going to require you to register your name and email and then you'll get this manual which is extremely valuable and uh, I think approaches the whole subject of arc flash in a very logical way secondly um, I would encourage you to contact sales at easypower.com and request the data collection notes these are uh, notes that we distribute during data collection class. And uh, again, it's it's very common sense approach. First thing it does is talk about organization and which devices you need to be looking at. And there are templates built into that as well. So now what I'm about to do now is uh, show how to utilize Easy Power tools and this can be done with Easy Power or the One Line Designer to plan, organize your process, divide the system into logical sections, and then um, evaluate as you go along rather than jumping into the thing whole hog and not being sure that you're getting everything you're supposed to the first time through. And uh, for sure, trying to avoid multiple times going back to a panel or a site, uh, especially if you need to de-energize it to collect data, and it necessitates shutting down portion of the plant. So let's jump into the tools and talk about this. So even if you have, uh, even if you've not drawn a one-line diagram, I would encourage you to at least make a preliminary sketch and as you do, um, isolate or divide it into smaller sections that can be handled in kind of a bite-sized form, the tool lets me do that. And as I mentioned, what I'm utilizing is the database editor, which is the one-line designer. And it's the portion of the tool that's launched every time you open up a new project. Um, but as you draw your one-line diagram, especially for some reason if you've gone overboard and draw the, try to draw the whole thing up at one time, I encourage you to sectionalize it. So what I've done is click and drag to rubber band this bottom feeder leg, and I want to go and put that on a separate one-line diagram by itself. So once I click on Easy Controls, New Drawing, it'll separate that and allows the, uh, the electrician or the people doing the data collection to carry something around with them and reference in hard copy what what they need to be responsible for. Likewise, if you look at this, if you look at this diagram, you'll see there's some numbers where I have entry and some where I don't, and the missing data is indicated by double asterisks. Again, I'm going to highlight this particular section, and what I want to do is make a list of these elements so I know which elements need to be filled in. And I do that with a utility we call Database Browser. So I'm over here in the Database Browser part of the tool. And you can see it's, it's uh, 
summarized all of the elements that I've included in my rubber band. And as I scroll through each of these, you'll see it makes a list up here and allows me to export these to Excel. So let me start with motors and um, I'll show you how this works once I find them. Well, maybe I'll start with cables because I found those easier. All right, my selected cables is the subtopic. And again, this shows me everything uh, that's been completed as far as the data entry. I'm going to export that into Excel. And then I'm going to take this back to my one-line diagram and verify what it is that I need to collect. So let's go back to my one-line diagram. And if I have a bare uh, cable that I can look at, I use that. If I don't, I'll put a spare one in and look at how the tool deals with the data. As I enter a, a cable and open up the cable data dialog box, I can see there's some amount of data already put in here and then some that has red ask, uh, exclamation points that I need to enter. The tool, once I've told it which units we're using, the number of conductors per phase, the number of the type of cable, which is single core, and the type of insulation and the length. The only other element I need to enter is the link, is the, uh, excuse me, this is the size. The only other element I need to enter is the length, and it will calculate the rest of these elements for me. So the most important elements then end up being the number of conductors per phase, the type of cable, the insulation, the size, and the length. So if I come back over here to my spreadsheet, uh, clearly, I need to know what the ID name is, so we need to, that's something else we need to spend some time thinking through because the naming convention ends up being an important part of our organization. Once I get beyond that, I'm assuming all of my cables are AC, are AC so I don't necessarily have to enter data there. I wouldn't be taking data if the uh, circuit's not on. And again, something your system may require some of these columns that I'm going to take out. But I'm going to hide these as I go through to minimize the, uh, the number of columns I'm looking at. So making a note where the bus, the cable starts and where it ends, and a note on what the voltage is. Again, it may be necessary, it may not. If everything's 480, I can take this out. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this one. Uh, I don't have to care about units because I'm for now, I'm using everything in U.S. The type of cable is single core. If I don't know what that means, the tool allows me, with this context help, to go in and it'll have a description on each one of these elements. So a, sing, a 1C is a single con, or a one conductor per phase, three separate conductors used for a circuit, each one A, B, and C. So it's called single core cable, and there's a single core for each of the phases. And that's the most common uh, cable configuration. Um, and then if I have multiple conductors, that's what this number of phases per, uh, number of conductors per phase would be used for. Okay, so the point is, once I've highlighted the columns that I absolutely, absolutely need to collect data on, then I highlight those, and I'm going to fill them in yellow. And that's where I want my guys to spend time collecting data. I'm not so much worried about temperature most of the time. I do want to see the, uh, the type of insulation. It may, if we know the, everything in the plant's the same insulation, I may not need this. I won't know the rating, and uh, it may not make any sense to me to necessarily have this. Uh, if everything's copper and I know it's copper, I may want to take this out. If I have some aluminum uh, cabling around, I probably want to leave this in. I, I do want to make a note on the, the conduit size. So I, for my purposes, I want to make sure the guys record the conduit size. Um, if, there's, if there's more than one conduit, certainly that, and the type of material, if we're, they're different. Don't need to worry about these calculated um, values because that's what the tool calculates for me. 
So I'm going to hide those. But you get the idea. Once I've completed uh, consolidating this and removing the, uh, the redundant columns, then I have a relatively short form that now the uh, electrician can take with that one-line drawing that I'm giving to him and be able to reference what he's doing and, uh, and record the data in these boxes that I've highlighted in yellow. Now, the same thing can be done with virtually every other device in the system. So this was just cables. Let's say we're going to not do anything with that. Let's say I wanted to look at all the motors. So let's go to my database browser and look at the motors. This time I'll find them. Okay, so these are just the motors that I've highlighted. I'm going to export this to Excel. And where to go? I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's go back to my one-line diagram. Close the browser. Let's op open up a fresh motor or put one in there so I can see how it works. Pick up a motor, put it there. Open up the data dialog box. Now compare this data entry to what's being asked for in, in my uh, columns. All right, again, the unique ID name is important. Everything's going to be AC in my bus, so I'm going to take that out. I may or may not have to record the status. I do want to talk about what bus it's on, so I'm going to hide these first two columns. Um, certainly, I want to record the voltage. If it's uh, not what I expect for 80 US units, I probably don't need to uh, indicate. Now, the model, this is something let's look at. It says individual. As I'm collecting data, um, I'm, at least on the first time, I probably want to record everything individually. Turns out, though, we can group the motors. Let's say we have a bus with a lot of small motors. Uh, rather than have to detail each one out, we may want to put one lump sum. Let's say we had 20 motors that were all half horsepower. We could set up a group that was 10 horsepower and be able to uh, meet the needs of the study that way. Again, it's something to play with once you, uh, once you actually start working with your system. Um, type of motor is important. Load class may or may not be important. RPM. Again, we may have specialized motors where that's important. For my case, I believe everything's 1800 RPM, so I'm going to take this out. I don't, I don't necessarily need to record full load current if it's not on the nameplate. If it is, then I probably want my people to record that. So the main things I want to record are the horsepower, so let's highlight that column. Full load current. Um, I'm not going to worry about power factor or efficiency unless it's non-standard. I don't care about the uh, ANSI code, the connected, the uh, impedance. I don't care so much about. If the X over R is on the nameplate, I probably do want to record it. However, the tool uh, will calculate X over R if we come back and look at this. If you look at this first block, the only red exclamation point is the size of the motor. So I put, I put in 20 horsepower. It pretty much has this whole page filled in. The next one is the X over R, and based upon the ANSI rating for the size of motor, the tool will calculate the X over R for me. So if I don't have it, it's not that big of a deal. TCC, there's nothing to enter. Power flow, there's nothing to enter. Power start. If I do calculate, it, again, it comes up with all the parameters based upon data that's already entered. So for the most part, motors are relatively straightforward as long as I don't have any anomalies. So um, this really boils down to primarily the horsepower, the name, the ID name, and... Uh, and then anything that's non-standard in terms of uh, the power factor, efficiency, or full load current. 
So most of the rest of this, this chart is not necessary. Okay, so my point is literally every subsystem that I can, uh, that I can isolate in my one line, I can build up a, a chart for and methodically go out and organize data collection for my one line. And at this point, what I've done is essentially just the, the one, this one sub feeder. I want to go back and enter that data and then verify that it will produce the results I want. So that's, that's a step down the road in modeling. But um, the, the point I want to make is the templates for the data collection are relatively simple if you can start with a skeleton one-line diagram. And that can be done with Easy Power or uh, One Line Designer. And, uh, and you're off and running. So I recommend, um, I don't have time to answer questions right now. I appreciate you all attending. And uh, certainly if you've got, you're welcome to enter questions online or send us an email uh, that we can answer offline. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. So what we've done is essentially use the tools to help organize the process and build up spreadsheets that people can collect the data with some kind of reference to the system that they're expecting to look at. More resources are at easypower.com on the ArcFlash page. Next week, we will be demonstrating how to use OnSite, which is a new mobile app for uh, tablets that EasyPower has now that will incorporate all this template information into a tablet format and um, eliminate double entry and hard copies floating around. And when you're all done, the tool actually will export a file that will draw the one-line diagram for you in EasyPower. So I invite everybody to attend that discussion, and we'll talk to you next week. Have a good one.